What was I doing with this file? I don't even remember. Anyway, irrelevant. <clears throat> well, I'm going to, um, continue working on generics. I want to fix nested generics. But before that, I want to clean a couple of things up. Actually, there's a couple of things I want to do. So, I want to make the type checker parallel. So I might do that also. Uh, at the moment, it's not running in parallel. Um, I just designed it in a way where it will work the same in parallel. So, uh, I might do that. <clears throat> uh, and I just want to clean up a few things and do the nested generics. So, I'm just going to start off. Um, I'm just going to start off. Well, first, here, let me just. Um, I just want to show you the current state of, um, I actually also added in these timings for the type checker. Now, these timings, uh, not correct for type, the totals here are correct, but, uh, the type checker timings here are missing some time because let's open that up. Uh, see the timing it starts here and then does elapsed time since these declarations but <clears throat> really there's a whole bunch of stuff that's missing from those timings um, if you look here these pre-register types is not timed uh, all these deferred functions not timed so that's uh, that needs to be fixed so that, that's not important for now I'll fix that uh, maybe I'll, I'll fix that after I do the parallel also. Um, and what else was I going to say? But the main thing is that these totals are uh, totally correct. So that's that's the most important part. <clears throat> Just adding the V verbose flag gives you these um, these per file based timings. Um, so a couple other things I wanted to clean up. Um, 
instead of passing this file set into these methods, where is it? Um, instead of passing the file set in here, I might just pass it to the um, new parser method. <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking I'll do, but let me think. See, in the I can even get rid of this method. This really is kind of like what initializes the parser for the file that needs to be passed. So it just clears the state for when you reuse the parser. Um, let me think here. Um, <clears throat> so we call it here init. Um, it should be, it used to be called clear even, I think. Um, let's just see what this will look like. So if we get rid of <coughs> file set from here. Is it uh, file set? Or is it used? See, so init deck it doesn't even need to be passed around there. <clears throat> and then we should have it here. Mute token. Uh, is it file set? File set. And this is a reference, a pointer, or whatever. Reference. <clears throat> I think I need to do that. I think I do. If we don't, I think it'll um, complain. Um, so where else we got here? <clears throat> So we should just really do d dot file set that add file. And get rid of it from here. Before I save that, let me just check. Um, so file set was where is it? Okay. Um, so ah, what have I done? This is the. <clears throat> Let's get rid of passing that there. See. So, here, when I create it, I can do um, all sets. Get rid of it. And what was this other comment? I'll just remove from that as well. Save this, let's save this one. And let's open the parallel one. Um, <clears throat> and that should be, where is it? So, 
can get rid of it from there. So the, here I would mute vstate.final sets and um, remove it from here. Yeah, everything should just work the same. <clears throat> oh, this should be a pointer. What's going on here? That wasn't a that wasn't a reference. Interesting. Um let me just save this and see if it runs. <clears throat> uh, typical I've done something. What have I done? <clears throat> 37 on parser. Um 37 files. I did not have it on the, um, I didn't have it on the, I didn't have it on, that's why I had it like that, because I didn't have it on the, <laughs> I didn't even have it on the parser, I thought I had it on the, on the parser field. Um, and if I already had the field there, I thought, well, that makes sense just to, Um, I'm just trying to exit. Oh, where's my chat gone? I can't see the chat. Um, where is it? Where is it? It's disappeared on me. Where on earth? Um... I can't see the chat. <laughs> it's just not here. Ah, this is ridiculous. What is going on? It's like a old, old newbie. Maybe because I've got, hang on one minute, get rid of that. Sorry guys, just give me a tick. Um, okay, uh, I got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, my bad. It's right there. Okay, all good. Uh, what have you said? Log in, log out. Another super mega useful language. Um, well, it depends what you um what you're looking for. To me, it's um a useful language with a lot of potential. To you, it might not be. Um. Yeah. It's got everything I like in a language, from the simplicity of the syntax to um, the performance. Um, just not not too many crazy features where it takes you forever to learn. Um, it, it's 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 everything I like in a language. So to me, it's it's the perfect language. It could be the perfect language if 
if everything is done, if, how do I say it, if, um, has the potential in my mind to be what I would call uh, one of my, like, perfect languages, if everything works out the way I envision or the way, well, who am I to envision that? I'm just saying I have ideas in my own head, which I feel if they were met um, to me personally, it would be perfect language. Of course, nothing's perfect. There's always little things that, that you don't agree with or little things that bother you. But generally speaking, compared to what's out there, um, I'm rambling on. Don't mind me. Uh, okay, back to the code. So, yeah, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about this for now. Undo, 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 undo. I'm not sure if I want to bar them around or if I want to store them um, in a field on the struct. So I'm just going to pass them around for now. It's easy to change. It's not a big deal. So leave that how it was. <clears throat> um, so. Now. Yeah. See, I, I, I fixed this um, generics enough where, well, the part of the checker that is actually running it doesn't error out on this. And we can, if we add a debug, if we add D, I think he's, let's just add, this is another thing I want to fix. Um, I'll get into that. Let's add the D. Uh, what have I done? Oh, sorry. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's a constant. Um, let us put this in um, text file, the errors. Well, actually, maybe it's nothing being printed um, in error. Maybe it was going to stand it out. Okay. Um, oh, I added these little log message methods. Um, that's an E log. So why wasn't it? What did I do? Look, I've used Rust before. Mostly I used Rust, um, yeah, what, what? Have a look at that comparison, but I have played with Rust before. Um, mostly when uh, Rust was in earlier days and it was changing a lot, but um, it can be a little bit cumbersome feeling. Um, yeah, and the syntax as well. I mean, it, it has its own strengths and weaknesses. It's a nice language, Rust, but to me personally, um, I like the simplicity of V. Um, uh, so where was I? Why are my errors? Oh, sorry. What have I done? Well, let's, I'm not sure what's going on here.
Let me just um Hmm. That's odd. Let me just change this to a print line for a sec. Okay, that explains it. Um, I guess that was right. Oh, good. Um, something strange is happening. Could be that. This is weird. This was just working before. I don't know what I've done. Um, let's check with our new um, verbose log exactly what's happening. Okay, something's wrong here. Um, oh no. Ah. I did, when I was adding the timings, move some things around. I may have messed something up. <clears throat> Let me have a look. I moved. Actually, I just moved this stuff. Two of those. No, oh, that doesn't matter. But hmm. I think I know what I've done. Yes, my bad. Um, I messed it up. <laughs> no, I'll fix that now. Pretty sure this is supposed to. Yeah. Um. I think this was supposed to happen here. I think. That's not right. <clears throat> what have I done? Let me just check. Uh, 
Okay, no, everything looks all right. So it must be something else. Um, what have I done? Hmm. Hi, Daniel. Thanks, um, Haradrim. Um, so what is going on here? Well, yeah, let me just um, log this normally, see what's going on. Huh. What is, what's going on here? I've surely messed something up. Mm -hmm. um. Did I save that? Yes. That's bizarre. Okay, so I'm doing that, yes. Okay, that looks good. Types looks good. Um, that looks good. Hmm. Something's not right here. But everything is working as, as it should, except for this test. It's all good. Um, that's all good. <laughs> I don't know if this is happening. Um, Let's investigate. I have a feeling it could be. Let's just do, let's just print line this because I don't know if something weird is going on with my generic function.
Okay. So, yes, okay, so it's just, it was just something with that generic function. So, basically, yes, it was something to do with, um, with this. Oh, wait, I didn't have, oh, I took V out. I took D out. That's why. Oh no, it's only on verbose. I took the V out. <laughs> I forgot I had this. So that should work anyway. E log, let me try. Sorry about the stupidity. Um, let's try verbose. Um, no, it's not working. Well, that's yeah, that's the error. So, sorry. Let me just do log. Huh. That's weird. Ah, oh, that's not working either way. Verbose. What option sets verbose? Anyway, let's, let's not worry about it for now. Fix that later. So let's just change, uh, let's do, let's do E, actually let's do C dot E log. Okay. And let's change them to E print line. Uh, I should change all of them to e print lines. Okay. So now <clears throat> we can see for this sum, um, if I open this file, uh, we have this, um, this function get element. Okay, and as the parameter t, generic parameter t, and here it's a bit hard to make out, but we have um, all the different types that for all the different calls, all the different types that um, t was set to. So we have here, uh, well. It says untyped because these literals weren't, um, they weren't promoted to types. They should be promoted here, but that's, that will get fixed at another point in time. Um, so yeah, we have, um, yeah, we have the integer untyped, which is just these integer literals. Uh, we have float from, from here and we have the balls from here. So that is good. And if we look in the checker, to get the generics to work, which I actually ended up cleaning some stuff up off screen, off stream yesterday or the day before, whenever it was. But um, I'll just show you something. The, so basically when we're part, uh, checking a generic function, we do, I've set these uh, fields on uh, these shouldn't be my some of these should be moved actually but anyway I've got this generic params uh, field on checker right C dot generic params okay All right, let me just fix that highlighting Okay, so uh, when we pass the function signature, or basically the function, we set these, see the generic params, okay? 
um, we are setting that to these, these here, right? So you know, if we, it, we just just it's just setting these basically. Oh, it's setting those on checker. So the checker knows the current the the function that it knows um for the function that we're in what the generic parameters are, right? Nothing to do with the types, just just t, y, whatever it may be. Okay. And the reason it sets those is I'll show you. If uh, when we run identify, so let's say we're in this code, let's say that we're um. How, do, how should I say? Um, okay, when we're passing this this type, right? When we so when we're checking this type, I'll just show you just briefly how the checker works, so you get an understanding of this. So when we're checking this, uh, let's just go to that. Let's go to the piece of code that checks this. So. Okay, so for parameters, parameter type, just type checks the expression here, parameter type, okay? And it has a T in there. So what's happening here? Well, this is an array, okay? Now, in this was passed as an AST array type, okay? So this expression here is AST array type. Now, the element type is an identifier T. Let's just identify T. That has no idea what that is, okay? So let's have a look at the AST dot array type. Array type. Okay. So this is what it is. It's running this array type, then element type, C dot expression, element type. Again, element type is the identifier T. Okay. So let's go to the identifier. This passes identifiers. And now, if ident.name in C generic params return name type ident name. Okay? So this returns name type T. So when we're passing these types or passing, it could be nested in any any way, no matter how deeply nested this is, right? It could be in, you know. A map inside an array or whatever it may be as soon as we get to the identifier part of checker that checks this t ident it says hang on this is for a generic function with a t parameter okay create call it make it name type t so as soon as we know this now we know that this is generic so that's very simple okay now, the other thing is, once we have, um, once we go to the, I'll show you the call, right? Basically, the call will set, um, once we call it, we know what the, what the types are, or if we provide them um, like this, you know, if we provide it like int or provide it manually, say so the call, um, the types, the actual types, known from the call obviously and they get set during the call they, they get set onto the checker as well into these current generic types um, and let's have a look at that current Okay, um, oh, it's this in the generic types. Oh, 
All right, so. Here's the bit that um, if we have a list, a generic args list, then um, we create this um, map of generic types that maps the T parameter to the type. And if they're inferred by the args, uh, then we do the same thing. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No, thanks, Siri. Um, okay. Go away, Siri. <laughs> Then we set that onto this env.generic um, types, and then basically the identified just, just replaces it. So that's um, it's fairly easy. Oh yeah, and we see here that um, w when we set that names type for, for T here, this is um, we're passing the argument, it says here, if parameter type is named type, then we know that it's generic argument. Now this works for single level, for example, like this, like um, uh, I've see it works because I've done it for arrays here. See if if it's an array, we check the element type. If the element type is a name type here, but you could see that um, so basically. In, in this code here, we're checking for just the case of um, like like this, like uh, T or this array type next to it. Now, but you can see when this become more complicated, for example, let's look at this. Uh, do, do, do. Let's have a look at some of these, okay. <clears throat> well, what have we got here? Um, Okay, well here, look, these are a bit more complicated, aren't they? So what are we going to do here? You know, we, um, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit more complicated than a single type. So these are two simple checks, but we need a way to do it no matter where it is, what, what, no matter what it's, um, nested inside of. So I'm just going to think about the best way to do that. Kat, katamoi, kat, katamoi. I mean, I don't think J is a competitor to V, to be honest with you. I think J is a, I mean, possibly, but I think it's more um, geared towards people who are currently doing C++ programming, personally, or writing games. <clears throat> Um, so I was just uh, talking about that stuff anyway, I just wanted to explain a little bit about how it's working currently. So, um, let's, let's have a look at some more complicated examples. So we have a little test here, where is it, uh, generic, generic function here. Yeah. Which is simple, just the T parameters. Okay. <clears throat> and we can see here that that all works. But let's add something more complicated here. Let's do. Or we've got one here. Okay, let's do. Now I've, it works for arrays, but uh, it's not going to work for maps here because it's it's all manually here. So I need a way where it's going to figure this out for any type. Okay. So what the best way to do this be? Let's see.
I guess we can just, I don't know, let's add a method or something. Um, let's add a method. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Uh, let's just, uh, let's call it, oh, it doesn't matter what we call it for now. Let's just call it, um, Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm calling it that for now. I'm going to call it something else when I think of the appropriate name for it. Um, and let me just think about this for a second. So, I want a way, I want a way where by passing in a type, we can figure out if it has any generic um, parameters in it. So, let's do t type okay now we will do doo, 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 doo. now i'm not sure if i have to get all of them or some of them um so let's see let's just do a match match t okay now we've got uh, we don't have too many types so we, we're okay with that we've got um we just need to do this for arrays, um, maps, channels, map, or could we do it when we, we do it when, um, let me think for a sec. If we do it when we pass the type. There's another way we could do it, but let's try this way for now. Because the other way would require wrapping all types in something or changing the signature of one of the, of the expression function. So let's just try this for now. Uh, we have channels. Let's just go to type to make it easy for ourselves. Uh, where is it? it? Should be here. So we got a alias array channel in. Um, it's not going to be any of it. It's going to be structs, map, pointers, struct, map, pointer, result, option, thread, alias, struct, thread, uh, option, and result. Now I've called these option type and not just option because option is a name struct in built in and it would conflict if I named it option. So I've had to call this one option type. to see <clears throat> if we have a named arg uh, and we're sitting onto this generic type map the if, if it's a name type then we get to set it to the arg type okay so that is okay what we can do is we could pass in the actual type here no let me think about the best way to do this Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can get the type that we have. I could say the type that we let's say well, let's just say 
of rem t f. And let's say, um, uh, Yeah. Yeah, if if RAM type dot LM type is named type, maybe I should rename that to something else like T type or generic. Ram type or T type or I can just do a search and replace on that when I want. So <clears throat> if this is the case, then what we do is we need to get the inside type out of this. So let us say that we have, well, for starters, if those types don't match, if it's not an array, then we're going to have to error anyway. So that will happen in a previous check. So we can do let's see uh, so it has to be the same type or we will error earlier. So we should be able to just cast it here. Um, Uh, what should I call it? Let's just call this um, as array. <clears throat> can we still do that or is it? I think we can still do that. Um, because if it's not, it would error earlier in the for well, it has to be, or we can just do if, if it's an array, we could just do, let's just try this for now. We can put it in an if with a smart cast if we want. <laughs> now, what we would do is, is name type, then we know that the name of that matches to the element of this. So what we, what we would do is, um, Just thinking the best way to go about this. So, gotta do it for all the types in there. Let's just make a little. I'm not sure if I'll do it like this, but let's just do this for now. Um, maybe it's a string <clears throat> type. Okay. Then is name type, then what it would be is it would be, it would end up with something like this, like uh, type map, uh, ram type, or lm type, or name, which is the name of this name type equals, it would be at lm type. So basically, that's mapping um, the that's mapping the well this is a map but let's say this is mapping this T to whatever it was called with the element of the array it was called with now <clears throat> yeah the good thing about naming is we can do search and replaces I love search and replaces <laughs> And also I like to, sometimes I like to, I don't know the appropriate name for things. For example, once I see something functioning, I find it much easier to name it. Uh, it's the same with like when I'm implementing something, like I might not know exactly how it should work, but when I see it in place, like, um, or how other things use it, you know, it gives you a better idea. I don't like to waste too much time thinking about how something, sh 
or some things I like to think a lot about, but some things I don't like to waste time thinking about. I like to just do it and see how it things fall into place around it. Um, all right, so now let's do, let's do maps here. Well, let's just see this. Um, so in the case of an array, what we should be able to do is, we, we're doing this here manually. So we should be able to just say something like this type map here. We should just be able to get it from, we should be able to say something like, for we should be able to say add, add whatever we get we should better say like um c dot for example uh, equals c dot generic x i will read <laughs> generic x so we've got uh uh so we got param dot type, and then we got arg type. Okay. And it'll be something like for, for KV in TM. And then we set the the generic map types here. So <clears throat> so how what can I how can I do this? What is this generic map? Um so generic type maps is that, okay. That's just for the call. Um, so I can either pass that into, I can either pass that into here or I can just return a map here and then fill it in. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to do that is for now. Um, let's just pass it in for now and then we can, let's just get it working and then we can, we can, um, fix the signatures, make it cleaner. That's the way I like to do it. I just, I like to go in for rounds of cleanup after. <laughs> let's just say my map and let's call it uh, string type. Uh, sorry, type map is map. So we don't need that. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Now, here we we've got the type generic type map. So let's just pass that into this. Okay, now that should replace, well, it won't yet, but see, we're gonna replace this. They need to check for every function with that. So let's let's comment that. Let us do, I'll just leave that error for now. Um, actually, you know, we don't need that. Well, let's comment this for now. Okay, let's delete that. This needs to be mutable. All right, so we have, um, you know, in the case of, uh, let me think for a second, we've got, Okay, in the case of, okay, this is this is good. Now, I've, in the case of a named type here, named type, now we just need to just do, what we do is type map, uh, param type dot, uh, name and then it will be equals uh, type 
Okay, so we're just creating a mapping of, um, in the, see, ne they could be nested. Uh, we just want to map these T types to the real type that's coming from the argument. Now, no matter how deeply nested it is, so we need to do, we need to create a nice function that will do that and it can do it to, no matter how deep it is, like, so, <clears throat> hundred K lines in a file. I mean, it's not a hundred K a thousand. Yeah. That's, that's nothing. Um, hang on, let me, um, <laughs> what about this file? Oh, wait a minute. Ah, that's a lot of lines. And interestingly, see this file here. Um, that one million file. Let's pass that file. Let's do it. Let's pass it one million. Okay. Oh, there we go. Passed. Uh, we got a lot of um. He, we got a lot of prints in the checker and stuff, maybe slowing it down. But uh, 700 milliseconds we just passed. And we also checked it to some degree. And we also, gen if I if I add this um, D flag, uh, we did not only did the million file, we did also all of built-in and as well. If I add, um, well, let me try something too. Let's go to build R. Uh, I'm going to turn off the type checking for a sec. Okay. I'm going to do this again with no type checking. Um, and let's also turn off verbose. And let's turn off debug for now. Okay. So yeah, we're looking at about passing 763 milliseconds. Uh, what have I done? Um, probably because it also might be a bit slower than normal because I'm streaming. Because normally I think it's about 500 and something. But anyway, 700 milliseconds. And this is also generating back the V a million lines. So if I add this D flag, you'll see that uh, there you go, it's generating a million lines of V and for the includes as well, if I go skip built in, uh, skip imports and I run that and dump it to one mil dot text or one mil, let's call it one mil out dot V and open that file, one mil out dot V, there we go, it's dumped back into 1 million lines and there you go passed in 761 milliseconds um, anyway that was a little side quest relevant really <laughs> um, Anyway, let's close this. Oh, also, um, oh yeah, I'm streaming. That's right. It's a bit, it's a bit slow. Everything's a bit slower than normal because I'm streaming. Um, all right. So, where was I? Let's enable the type checker again. All right. <clears throat> so, we have. Okay, let's do maps. So I want a better name for this. So let's call it, um, I'll just call it array. Oh, can I do? Um, 
Oh, I have not. What have I done? Okay, I'm missing. It's not exhaustive, so let's do. Let's just do. Missing. Um, let's do param. Um, what else is there? this AT What have I done? Expected string, not function string. Rem the name. Oh, what have I done? I messed that up. Oh, no, I haven't. Hang on. Hey, that should work. What is going on here? I'm type dot Alan type. His name type. Okay. Okay, the name. What is going on here? Oh, hang on. Oops. It was here. <laughs> um, oh, hang on. What is this? Should I just string? No. What is this? Not function. Oh. Oh, hang on. The name is a function and a method name type dot. Wait a minute. It should have a field and a method, but. Oh, because it's not. Hang on. No, that's, that should work. Why is it doing that? Uh, let me just check something. Oh, that's right. I forgot that it's um that it's uh, it was defined like that just an alias to string. Okay, never mind. That's uh, that's why. Forgot about that. So let's just do. I should just be able to go string. Or I could even just map. 
as in type names. Um, I could just do, actually, let's just leave it string because I don't know if that, that's supported. Um, see if that not cast oh name hang on all right that's better yeah so this one same okay and what's this other arg type which should we have to have an e at the end so should be arg type oh, this stupid highlighting okay should have an e uh what is this tm okay well we don't need that anyway Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to where we were. So we've got, let's do maps. So maps, yeah, we've got uh, if, ram, no, so we're key type and value type in this case. So dot key type is named type. Um, and we also need a way to check that we've got um, different, maybe like if the, if it gets, if we use one type as T and then a different type as T, well, it's got a, in the same call that's it's got an error so we'll um well we'll add that later let's just do this <clears throat> so program for key type let's do key type is type dot key type and value type Okay, this could be a cursed expression type or something. Um, well, it is the R, uh, this is the parameter of it. Oh, let's just leave it like that for now. Um, now, struct, we need to do the fields. Let's do option result. So if ram type dot base type is named type. And uh, type is option type. I think that's what it's called, uh, base type it should be, so option type, yeah. Where is it? Yeah, base type, same for result type. I mean, we could even just do the same for both, like option. Okay, let's just comment that. Okay. Who is messaging? 
What's going on in the chat? Is the sound not working? I mean, the only good thing about doing stuff out of the, doing is like, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, of course. Like, for example, I don't think there's any point trying to make like a fully optimizing compiler. Like, I think if you're going to do machine code generation, you can do, some people might not like this, but this is my opinion. If you're doing straight machine code generation, there's a lot of optimizations, which are quite easy to do on your, uh, intermediate representation you get nice you know quite nice performance decent um the compiler will still be blazing fast right and it'll be fairly simple now you can go down a rabbit hole of trying to do all these different optimization passes in your compiler at which point you're trying to compete compete with llvm and you're just not going to be able to compete because they're constantly, I mean, look, look how big their libraries are. Look how complex, complex their compiler is. I mean, their framework is because of all the optimizations and things it does. And if you want fully optimized binaries, the fully optimizing compiler, you're best plugging into LLVM or plugging into an existing thing like CraneLift and CraneLift can't even compete with LLVM on the optimization level. Um, but then my idea is to build a compiler that is, hey, yes, it optimizes the code to like a decent level and it's still blazing fast, um, it's still nice. And if you want really, really optimized binaries, then use, well, I guess what I'm saying, you could use that Gravel VM or whatever you call it. I, I haven't even heard of that. Um, but yes, like I'm saying, you could use that or you could use LLVM. And the beauty of writing the compiler, the beauty of using the intermediate representation that we'll be using is, let's say that I wanted, I don't know about the one that you're talking about, but I know about LLVM. I'll look into it. Look, like I, I may have heard of it, it rings a little bell, but I don't know much about it. Like it, the only thing I know about it is it rings a bell in my head. Okay, so let's say I wanted to, let's say for example, I'm just using this as an example, but let's say I wanted to add a LLVM backend to V. Okay, I, I don't want, LLVM can be slow and this and that, but I'm just using this as an example, right? The beauty of the way it's gonna be designed is, and LLVM in general, because I know a bit about it, uses the SSAIR, and I've looked at their libraries. So what you could do is, it wouldn't be very hard at all to call their libraries. I don't mean, um, I'm not talking about outputting, um, a textual representation of the IR and then loading it into LLVM. I'm talking about in memory data structures. So going from V's SSA IR in memory, you construct it in the V compiler. Then in memory, you call into LLVM and compile all in memory. So that would be the fastest way to, I mean, as in fastest in, as in speed wise to use LLVM. And also it would be quite simple because the SSA form is simple in itself and LLVM is doing all the hard lifting in that case. So that's a very, that if you wanted LLVM back end, it would be actually quite simple to add. Um, now I've gone off talking about, I've, I've gone off on a tangent basically. All right, thanks. But, um, I gotta have um, dinner with my family in a second, but, um, I've gone off on a tangent. So basically, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm just talking about competing with optimizing compilers. But um, I will check. I will check that out after the stream, uh, and I'll, I've made a note of it here, and I'm gonna look into that. The I uh, the only things I know was like mostly you know about is Crane Lift. Uh, I think it's one called M L I R or something like that, and L L V M, and there's a couple of other ones I looked into as I was reading some papers. Um, I read a lot of papers about compilers and intermediate representations. But look, I'm gonna look into that. Um, but in terms of, um, let's say you, you wanted to fully optimize binaries and you wanted to fully optimize and compile, 
then of course I would plug into something like that. That would be my suggestions. No, you can't just compete. So, but in terms of normal builds, I want V to output machine code directly as well, because you're never going to compete with the speed of the compiler when it's outputting its own machine code. Like it's going to be blazing fast. The V compiler is going to be so fast for debug builds. And you can even, and if you wanted to add like incremental com compilation or something, but now I'm just going off on a tangent, but it's going to be very fast. And um, I want to have the virtual machine as well for compile time code execution. But anyway, going off on tangents, we're going back to, um, back to what I was doing. Okay, look, um, I've got to jump off for a little bit, but I'm going to leave the stream going. For like 10 minutes and I'll come back or should I should I close the stream and come back or should I just keep the stream going I think I should just keep it going um, uh, I'll keep the stream going and I'll be back soon maybe I should play some music for you Nah, it's all good. <laughs> what I'll do is um, I'll tell you what. How about um, you can watch the fishes, and I'll um, there you go. Watch the fishies. Uh, I'll be back. Sorry about that.
I'm back, baby. I might have food in my face. I should say. The views expressed in these podcasts are views of mine and do not represent the v language organization. I'm just joking. I'm just saying, but anything I say is my opinion. Not necessarily representative of um, the V language. Everything I say is my opinion. I try to do things in the best, um, what's best, what I think is best for V. Now, there's a lot of smarter people than me working on V. So, I said it fast on purpose. I was trying to be like one of those, you know, like those ads and at the very end it's like, it's got like the disclaimer, but it's like real fast. <clears throat> All right, so where were we? Channels, let's do channel. So we've done option and result. Let's do channel. Should just be able to copy this. Actually, channel has an element to hide. Why did I call it? I could, I mean, if I'd called it something else, look, let's just, let's just deal with that for now. And I made this optional because I'm pretty sure channels can be defined without a type, I think. Um, so if, let's say if, Yeah, if T T is um I'm type dot uh, uh what am I doing? Alum um <clears throat> uh if C T is named type and uh, is channel um then we'll say um if this is a bit convoluted now if uh type Could probably uh, fix that it's a bit get rid of these nested ifs or something I'll clean it up <clears throat> let's just make it work et et equals at t
What have I done? <laughs> Value type. Value type. Um, what did I do? Ah, hang on. Um, ah, um. Okay, <clears throat> of course we'll clean all these up. Um, so we got threads. Same thing here. <clears throat> Same thing as channel basically. So we might even be able to do, we could even really do, actually no, let's just do, and what have I done? Now I've messed this up because that's, um, Hang on. Let's just do. Ah. Results. Simplify these ifs and stuff. Probably a lot, probably doesn't need to be this. Um, some of these don't need to be nested and things like that. Um, <clears throat> ah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see, let's, after we've run this here, let's see what our type map looks like. So let us, um, should be, where is it? Let's after, okay, let's do it after the loop. So we can look at the whole thing. Um, let's just, uh, we've got it here. So let's, uh, we're doing, we're doing this. So generic type map. So let's add the, we've got the verbose flag. Let's pipe the output to uh, well, let's redirect the output to the one dot text file. Okay, <clears throat> let's load the text file up here. Okay, reload it. it. Might have already been open. Now let's look for this generic type map. Okay, so actually I should have. Okay, well here we can see indeed we have worked out T and Y. Now I, I should. Let us let us do something else. Let us um, let's uh, let's open a new. Let's do that. Okay. I don't know why I resize these in Helix. Um, I don't know if I can if I can resize them. But let's um let's open up the test. I think it was uh, this one maybe no. This one. Okay. <clears throat> so we can see here that we have, do, do, this is what we've inferred basically. T is, um, is, it, is untyped because it's the literal and it should be promoted to an integer. But anyway, well, for now, we'll, don't worry about that. So, and we have um, the string. Now let's let's do a little modification. Now let's do a little modification. Like um, let's do this one with the map, okay? 
and uh, let, let's not worry about anything here for now. Well, let's just say, um, uh, what have I done? I've messed something up, hang on. Uh, I've set it to the wrong type, hang on. I think, uh, so I think my function is messed up, which I did above. Now, I messed something up in it. This is right that we're looking at here, but what I, the code that I just wrote, I just realized something is wrong in it, but, um, the, the reason it's named option type is because there's a type in built in called option. I can't call it option. <laughs> That's why they call it option type. I wanted to just call it option and result. What's so funny? Oh. They're confused why these Rust code looks like Go. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. Help me. You know when Homer just like reverses back into the bushes? That's me. Oh. And he disappears. Alright. I've done something wrong with my code anyway, I think, but let's just um let's just do A equals T. Um, see because <clears throat> Well, no, it should be alright. So, um, well, let's just add a dump. It's not going to do anything anyway. So let's just let's just yeah, it's just add a print line just so we have a statement in there. It's not going to do anything. Okay, <clears throat> so let's add a call to this, and um, let's do. To, uh, we can do that. Okay. And let's do, let us do, let's do A is for Apple. B is for banana. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now yeah, let's do the same thing. All right, let's do the same thing. Wipe with this file. Reload it. Okay, <clears throat> now, what have we got? We can see for generic function C, we have T and Y. Well, we have a problem there because <laughs> here, it's a T is integers and here's it's strings and we've overridden it. So I need the error. See here we've got T and Y as strings, which is correct because it got overridden from here, but it should have errored because like we should have, I'm not sure what the best place to do it is, but let's say for example, now I should have a, a function like insert, um, it should be a function which inserts it if there's a different type it errors um so t let's do that let's do that okay um <clears throat> let's do, 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 do what's the best way to do this um let's add a little let's add a little little function here right <clears throat> let's do, 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 do set um set Let's do set um, add. This is add add uh, type map equals. Let's just let's just do this. Um, I will clean this up. No, oh, I'll do it. I don't know. Let's just do this for now. Just just so something is working. Uh, let's call this, um, let's just say, uh, 
Okay. Uh, let's just say um, and. I'll just say this is called map talk. Okay. Map talk. Okay. And then we'll do, 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 do. let's also do if um okay, we're gonna need some um we need uh we need the key, so we need um name and we need um type. Alright, now we, what we can do is <coughs> we'll, we'll do this if so if name in type map, okay, let's do if existing equals type map name. Now if existing not is type, we're gonna error. But let's just panic at the moment panic um, and then we'll just say do, 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 name name was previously uh, previously used as a uh, type of name okay actually All right, so <clears throat> otherwise, let's uh, set it then otherwise. Uh, type. Mm, name equals type. Okay. Well, these errors and stuff, you can see the message is wrong. It's just, we'll fix this stuff, you know, it's just, it's just to get it working. Uh, hello, Tesseract. <laughs> the Tesseract. The Tesseract is a cool thing. Yes. I like those four dimensional shapes. There's some like really weird ones. If you, has anyone ever, oh, what's his name? The guy that wrote the programming language, um, Mathematica, well, no, what is it? Um, uh, what is it? It's, um, I can't believe I've forgotten the name of it. Um, uh, Oh, I know I can find it easily. Um, uh, Wolfram, Wolfram, Stephen Wolfram. Well, his, la his language is crazy, like in for mathematics and stuff. And he, I don't know if you've, what does he call it? Um, they've got this thing called Wolfram Research. He's developing like this project about physics, like where he's basically trying to get, he's trying to like answer these fundamental questions about physics and stuff basically. And he's coming up with like a different approach where he's, basically he was from a long time ago, he was really interested in automata like cellular cellular automata and he's using like he's very intrigued in the in the system that like in the way like by the what did I say he, he it intrigues him the way that like a simple set of starting parameters can you can end up with a very complex working system so this complexity emerges from simplicity, from simplicity, whereas like an ordered system emerges from this like simple thing where most things 
in the universe descend into chaos, not water. I think that's something like something like the gist of it like that. Or maybe I got it backwards. But anyway, basically he's used like Salga Automata to try and find the starting parameters to our universe. Uh, what does that even mean? Well, I don't know, to be honest with you. It's all these complicated mathematics and things. But he's come up with this thing called the Ruliad. And the Ruliad is like, it's like a thing which describes like, not only space and time, but like, everything else, like how you would move between like space and time and like the dimension, like it's like higher dimensions. It's like this crazy stuff. Like you, you need like masters and 20 years worth of like mathematics, like crazy knowledge to even understand this stuff. But it's pretty interesting if you look into it. Like, um, yeah, if you go to like Wolfram research and, uh, from research, I think it is. Um, oh, well, from physics project, that's it. And if you go to like writings.stevenwolfram.com, he's got this concept of the rule he Um, he calls it the entangled limit of everything. Anyway, it's, it's interesting stuff. Very interesting. Very hard to wrap your head around. But, um, very interesting. And he's seen that he's basically, so they're running these like simulations where it's like basically they're running like cellular automata with like starting conditions. And he's trying to find the starting condition that would yield basically our universe or that would yield something with the same rules as our universe. And he's already found, so he says, um, a set of like simple conditions, which will lead to some of where he's found like emerging properties of the physics in our reality. If I understand it correctly, that's a, uh, as mind bo mind boggling, but it's just amazing. Like you can start from a simple set of parameters and then rather than like just descending into absolute chaos, you somehow end up with like these ordered, like complex working systems which is the same thing like cellular automata how you end up with order anyway i went off on a massive tangent sorry about that back to the code <laughs> hang on there's, there's people watching here but no one's talking am i talking to myself all right so we have this we have this uh map type all right so now instead of this we can just do map type and we can do or we can just do this I need to pass the um the stupid oh, I could just do use um I could do mute type map okay okay oh, I'm not gonna use this like this is just this is just a this, this is just to get it working. I'm not actually going to use this uh, function literal and stuff. Oh, that doesn't even working. Uh, oh. oh, what have I done? Huh? Oh. Um. Oh. Mm. I'm not 
not sure the best way to do that. I don't know if that will work, that equals check, because it might not. We'll use that for now, but to do right. Need custom equals methods. Okay. <clears throat> I always write toed instead of to do. <laughs> all right, so we've got that. Uh, now we should replace all these other ones. I didn't even need the explicit cast before because of those strings, it just auto eventually um, works. That's right. Um, come on. Okay. Okay. You can do it. It's all up to you. Okay. <laughs> he was previously used as. Well, oh, there, there's that error. Why does it say function? Hang on. What's going on here? What have I done? Uh, this should be that. Okay. <clears throat> so now we should get the error because see here we called here we set T to um, t is integer here, right? But then we said t to string by by having the, this map value as t. So our error should reflect that. t was previously used as string, okay? No. Hang on. No, so t was previously used as existing, so uh existing so so okay so we just say um yeah existing so actually that int or we'll just say um in literal because yeah perfect All right, so that's that's a nice sort of a handy way to do it. So now the beauty of that is we should be able to. We need to. We need to do it like recursively, I think. But if we have this 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 helper, which lets us do this. Okay, the structs we need the fields, and function type. Okay, so let's do function type. Where we will check the we'll check the argument the parameters and we'll check the return type. Okay, so what we'll do is 
Let's do four, four param in param dot params. Okay. If param dot type is named type and uh, let's do if um, if arc type is function type. Now, <clears throat> we also have, uh, let's do I and no, so this will be param. Oh, let's say, uh, hang on, let me, I'll just say a param. Type for all right. This is a bit confusing. These names because you should have called it. Uh, let's just call these um, yeah, it's, it's confusing. So, uh well, this call is time meant to say I should rename these before it gets some um, confusing what I'll do is let me call it I'll call it um, let's call Well, that, that makes sense though, because one is the. Um, no, that's that's all right. This will be. Uh, let's call these param. <laughs> Oh, give me a sec. I'll be back in a sec.
Sorry about that. I had to help my dad with something. All right, <clears throat> so that's the right error. So <clears throat> if we were to do, 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 where is it here? If we change this to, we change this to foo, we shouldn't error anymore. We should don't. Okay, so now for function types, we need to check those. So, <clears throat> so for example, if we had, we could have, let's do, we could have something like this. So it gets a bit confusing to look at this, but you could have like, um, could be a function. We could have, uh, let's do, we could be a T, right? But <laughs> could be even more complicated than that. It could be B like, um, one. One. Oh no. What am I doing? That's not what I meant to do. Uh, hang on one sec. <clears throat> Um, what I meant to, what I meant to write was, um, I meant to write something like, um, it takes uh, like a function or something. No, what should I, should I, how do I write that? Huh. Well, let's keep it simple for now. Let's just do a function as the Let's see, let's keep this simple for now. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh, hang on, D.
See you, uh, Wusa. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Wusa. Um, alright, <clears throat> what is this, son? That's odd. That's... Yeah, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <sighs> okay, that's... That should be easy to pick. Oh, I know, I know why that's happening, so... Of this, so I <clears throat> say if um, if it's speaking, oh, well, it's just for now. I'll say. Wait a minute. This is. This can. This, um, oh. I could use an optional for that. What I should do actually is, um, I should have done, I should have made this, um, I should have made some of these optionals. And like and then I should have done like if um That's not going to work because, ah, what have I done? Um, um, just comment this for a sec. Okay, fifteen seventy four. Ah, well, no, I can't. Well, if... <laughs> That's stupid. Because I don't want to value, um... Uh... <laughs> uh... 
that's 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 a bit annoying. <laughs> oh, that's that's dumb. So it'd be like if that that's stupid. There has to be a better way to do that. <clears throat> that one, see that? Anyway, let's f, f, f this off for now. We, we're gonna use, we'll fix this later. For now, we're just going to do back how we, how we had it. Okay. Simple. Uh, now what we will we'll do is if That's because uh, you, you see this, um, this is because we never called it. So I've just put an, I have put an error there for now, but if I call it, should get rid of the error. Obviously normally that's not supposed to error, but I just put that in. So I, well, I was testing stuff. Ah. Strange. Well, if you put it manually, let's just put it, um, let's put it string, let's put it manually. Oh. Well, let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. So, So yes, we never extracted any generic, that's why. Because, because of this. <clears throat> now what, what I should be able to do is, should be able to say, Should be able to say um what have I done? <laughs> um so now we got um Actually, and now we got uh, and we should be able to do we call this recursively. 
to extract the, I should go like extract generic um, types or something like that. Generic X. Um, I think um, I think that should work. Well, we need to do return type as well. So, um, so what? Uh, if um, if uh, let's do Hmm. Hmm. I never called it. Oops. Well, that's all right because. <laughs> Wait, I did. I did call it. What am I talking about? <laughs> um. What is going on? Generic question. D. D. This is saved, isn't it? Let's have a look what's going on. So we're inferring them here. Let us do, we are printing it there. So Okay. We done. Okay, here we go, generic function D. No, that's the deferred. Let's do it, generic function D. Okay. Hang on a minute. Something's not right here. Left hand side. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So strange. Uh, hang on, what have I done? Oh, I've done that as the, yeah, I never, um, what, what did I do? 
Oh, I crashed Helix. Actually, whole expression. Okay. Um, well, I, I do colon. Let me just say, instead of a function, let me do, because I probably, um, something to do with that function type. It's resetting something. So let's just do, actually, oh, it takes, uh, Uh, well, this is but look, because it's not going to care anyway. Let's just talk, pass some um, nil or something here. Because, um, just to see what happens. Oh. Hmm. Missing your time information. That's strange. Let's see what's going on. Actually, I can pass anything here, really. Uh, one, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, so. Okay, so joint parents on length. So with this time map, okay. Um, what I'll do is if if turn right hand side. D. What have I done? What? Oh. Just put the dog there. That's better. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so we have no inferred types. Okay, let's see what's going on there. So we 
play Jerry Tomorrow the map. Function time. <clears throat> we can also do if, um, <clears throat> well, we check that. Uh, let's just do. <clears throat> strange oh wait a minute ah, wait a minute it is no I know what's going on <clears throat> if um, it's a function literal look up path so no well, it's not even there Wait a minute. All right, wait. What is going on here? I don't need those names there. Well, that's irrelevant. You should have been passed fine either way. Um, so, <laughs> so, check that, because I'm never going to match there, but, <clears throat> The function literal. So let me just check the. Yeah, let me check the pass. No. Yes. Let's do, uh, function literals. Actually, let's just do key function. So it's not that one. Not that one. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so. Return a function literal. So in the checker here, we need function literal up type. So we don't have function literals in here. Oh, we do. Okay. So we need to check where we were before for um for um, hang on, what was I returning? Oh, hang on, it does return to function top. It did. Okay, no, it returns a function type here. So, <clears throat> no, so that should work. So, what's going on? Um, let's just say, let's do. Let's just do function time. Let's do and um and uh, okay. Mm -mm. 
so we've got this. Okay, so that's right. So we've got a function type. Yeah, and we've got int literal here. So, right. Now, oh, I've actually deleted that. But if we go back to here and pass, actually, if we go back to here and pass this um, function literal here, Uh, we got, oh, what is this? Two. There's uh, a problem. What on earth is that? Oh, we know it's a function type there, so um, don't need that one. <clears throat> oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, it's here, yeah. No, the function declaration, my bad. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, that's what I meant to look at. No, it's right. Okay, so type stuff, function type. That's not it. Wait a minute, where is it? What is going on here? What? Hey, what's what's going on? It's never even it's not matching here. So we never even got to this for some bizarre reason. Well, not bizarre reason. Something silly I've done. So. Let us just done. Um, let's do. Let's <clears throat> do. Well, it's, it's <laughs> oh, hang on a minute.
just got cleared. It got cleared from here. Oh, my oh, okay. I know what's going on. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I know what's happening. Um, um, uh, so Let's just do for some. Huh, that's strange. Um, I need to keep them, which I thought I was doing, should stay set, strange. Should stay set. Okay. Ah. Oh. What on earth? Um, <clears throat> the terminal here is Alacrity and the theme I'm using is AYU Dark except the term, some of the colors are a bit off on this AYU Dark theme in Alacrity that I've noticed in like in Helix that theme has slightly better colors and in um, like Wes term, that theme has better colors. Like pretty much that AYU dark theme seems to be a little bit off in the default theme for Alacrity. But besides that, it's good. I'm using the same theme for Helix. Um, so what's going on here? Do, 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 do. So... See, um, it shouldn't have been cleared, so, but messenger, she's very strange. Okay, we don't have that, but wait a minute, that's happening. Um, <clears throat> okay. What's 
with the cold. Um, there's something with this is messing up. Something with that is messing me up. Um, get rid of that. Hang on a sec. What? Oh, that's, uh, that's strange. So something is going on the wrong order. Have I spelled something wrong? What have I done? Let's put this up here instead of interest, see what happens. What on earth is going on? I'm so confused. What is going on here? That's bizarre. Huh, hang on, so what, now it's working. I don't know if I'm imagining something or what. Thanks, um, tortoise bean. What has been? <laughs> Full name. What's a tortoise bean? Like a little baby tortoise. Um, Alright, anyway, so what, what is going on here? So let's just pass a function here just to see what happens. Function. Uh, Well, now, <laughs> I'm not sure what exactly I did, but uh, let's just do, let's see what happens there. It's working now. What? Well, it's the length is wrong, but it's kind of working. Anyway, let's see what's going on. So we got, um,
Oh, it doesn't mean anything? No, oh, well, I like it either way. Um, so, what is this? Generic X, something is wrong with index out of range. Where are we doing indexing? Somewhere here. So, that doesn't have any parameters. Oh, that would be fixed by the type checker. I mean, by the checking of the params. So, let's just do int. Uh, sorry, yes, int. Int. Let's just put uh, one, one. Okay, okay. Now we painted this dot. Right, which is good. I did that on purpose before. I painted here to see what we had before. And here before we had integers and integer. All right, so now it's working. Why isn't, why wasn't it working before? So if I change this to string, then y should become string. Did I have an obvious typo there before or something? Why string? See, it's working. Um, did I have a typo before or something? I just don't understand why it didn't work before. <laughs> I mean, I had it on a new line like that. Did it mess up the parser or something? Right. No, it works. That's bizarre. All right, anyway, that works. So. So we can see that we've worked out from this call what T and Y are. <clears throat> now, there's more complicated things like what could be in here, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. Let's leave those errors. Let's leave those errors there so we can see if we need some errors, something like that somewhere else. But, okay. Now, what is this? I can get rid of those. Now we can get rid of this. All right, perfect, perfect. Beautiful, so yes, that, that's working nicely. Now let's try a couple other things. Let's do, let's copy this, okay, let's do E. Let's do um, I don't know. Let's just say actually. Let's do func. Let's do function. Let's do what? Let's do t. <clears throat> let's do let's do function. Map Y Y We got one on there. Let's just put these so we can see better what's going on. Um That looks confusing.
Okay. So we got E and we got put E, we got TMMY with string. Yeah. Yes, look, that looked that, oh, that worked out. That worked out nicely. So we can see by using this um this function, although there's something missing here, probably, by using this and then calling it self recursively, which we can do maybe we might have to do that somewhere else as well. But we can pretty much handle every option or every amount of nested um types in this way. Uh, well, yeah, we can, of course, uh, to do clean up and add any missing cases or missing recursion. Okay. Um, and we can, we can call this, um, Let's see. We'll call this infer generic. No, uh, we call this, um, yeah, infer cause. Otherwise, we already know. So, infer generic types. I guess you'd call it. Fair generic types. Um, fair generic type, I guess. Because here we set it manually when we got it, and here let's do infer. Now I busted something that I do. Oh yeah, it's a recursive call. Okay, all right, that, that's good. So I want to just take a little step away from this for a second. And I want to think about making the checker parallel. So let's do a little test here. Let us pass some, um, let's pass the, let's do, let's do our little array test here. Let's do our, um, so this, uh, we've got this um, generics test here, right? <clears throat> and um, if we run that, let's run it without the verbose flag. Now, if you run that, we see scan and pass takes about, I've got some print lines here. Let's remove those. Uh, we're in the T print line. That's why I have those log calls. Uh, let's just comment those. That 1450, 1450, 
These are no longer needed if we're not printing those. Okay, so we got this um, this test here. Now we can see it takes about you know scan and pass eight milliseconds, and what what and check around eleven milliseconds. Now check of course is missing a lot of stuff here. It's not so the, the final speed would be more than that. But if we have a look at uh, what's going on here. We can see that it's not it's scanning a fair few files because it's all of um built in as well and any includes it that doesn't include anything but there's all of built in here as well so it's a fair few files and we're doing it in 11 milliseconds right but also we've got a no parallel flag here a command line argument right so if we get rid of that that'll make the parser parallel so now you can see our scan and pass time went down to three, four milliseconds, two milliseconds, three milliseconds, around there. If we run hyperfine, it'll be stuck around two, three milliseconds, All right? Now that's two milliseconds to pass all these files. Um, uh, so, so, um, that's two milliseconds to pass all these files here. All right. So we did that in two milliseconds. That's pretty good. Um, the type checker is not parallel yet. So I want to make that parallel. So I, can, I designed the type checker in a way that everything will work in parallel but it's just not doing it at the moment if that makes sense i mean so nothing would conflict basically um we might just need some some mutexes or some locks whatever um so we got uh this is the bit this is the bit that does the passing in parallel so we've got this um I wonder if this is fixed for a little work around here. But anyway, we've got this, basically we start well, run times a number of jobs. We start that many workers. Now this is about eight. And I've actually found if you divide that by two on the, the computer I'm on, which is a MacBook M1, that um, if I divide that by two, I'll actually get better performance. So now that could be because something to do with the performance or normal cores or just it just you know it runs better with only four basically instead of eight um concurrent jobs but um so basically we start these workers right now and these worker just keeps reading in via channel uh jobs or files to be passed now I think, uh, I think I added a util worker pool. I added this utility where I wanted to have, for example, this worker pool. And what I would do is uh, pass it a worker function. So it would spawn, it would spawn however many of these workers and, um, And they would just do whatever jobs you needed. For example, yeah, the parser could use this as well as the, the checker. Um, this is the, this is a compiler for the V language. Um, Silly Alpa. Hello. Yeah, it's a compiler that we're working on. Specifically, yeah, the compiler, the parser, um, the scanner, parser, type checker, currently. And um, yeah, it, well, it, it, the syntax is very similar to Go, but it's closer to C in the way well it outputs C but 
you have you have more um as probably more in common with C than with Go. It was in Under the Hood, obviously. But you have the are hopefully close to the speed of C. But yeah, so we we're passing like let's do a little let's pass the current let's disable the type checker type I'm just gonna disable the type checker because otherwise we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna error and what I'm gonna do is. I'm going to ah come on. Okay, I'm just scanning the okay, well static methods. So basically this is this is how long it's taking around, well, you could say around 73, 80 to 80 to 90 milliseconds to scan and pass all these files here, basically the whole compiler, the whole current compiler. So let's output that to two dot text. Okay. So we're scanning and passing mm, scanning and passing, scanning and passing, scanning and passing. We scanned and passed 296 files. I don't know how many lines of code, but 296 files. This is lines of code per file. But yeah, 296 files in around 97 milliseconds. And that's not parallel. So if we do it in parallel, we get rid of this. We did 27 milliseconds. So we've just scanned and passed around 300 files in 20 to 35 milliseconds or 35 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. We're going to call it here 32 milliseconds, 27 milliseconds. So basically around 30 milliseconds we're passing all those files. Now imagine with a new compiler, which is so much simpler, so much less code, how fast it will be to compile itself. And um, if my calculations and my estimates, and what I have in my head is correct, even after we add the next stages of the intermediate representation construction, which is not a complicated stage, now, obviously you couldn't do optimization passes and all kinds of things on that, but I'm just talking about the plain construction of the SSA form. Um, that is not a complicated stage. It's not resource intensive. Um, so I think even with that and the generation stage is added, this compiler is gonna be very fast. Um, for people getting into programming that aren't very smart, well, I don't know what you mean by not very smart because I'm not very smart really, but I'm okay at programming. Um, I'm, I'm okay at some things, I'm good at some things, but there's heaps smarter people than me. If I, if I go on the internet and look at all the smart people, it makes me feel stupid, but the internet always shows the best side of people. Um, and it doesn't show all the stuff that they're not good at. So you can't really look at stuff like that. Um, I think you just give stuff a go, you know, and if you, if you enjoy it, just keep at it. 
Um, if you don't enjoy it, then try something else. Um, I mean, obviously, work can't always be fun. And if you want your job to be programming, then you might not enjoy it all the time. But if you want to just pick up programming as a hobby and you don't enjoy it at all, well, then I wouldn't even bother. But I think if you're a creative person that likes solving problems, um, then you'll enjoy programming because it's like building something, like building an engine or once it runs the first time or once you like get more power out of it and, or you fix a problem, you know, it's a satisfying feeling. It's the same with programming. It's like you've uh, created something that does what you want. You achieve something. So it's, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun feeling. It's like, it's like playing a little video game, but with code, you know, so I just get into it and, and try, you know, um, that's for a brat abroad and, um, for silly alpha. Well, the way I learn uh, programming languages or frameworks is mostly, well, when I started, I would look at code a lot and I still look at code a lot, but when I started and I was trying to understand what things were doing, I would look at code and read the manuals. Um, but after you've learned like, you know, multiple programming languages, um, or even a few, you start to realize that the terminology and the basic features of the language are the same. You, know, you might have a list type, which is like an array or some type of fixed array type or a dynamically growing array type. Uh, uh, you might have, you know, so sort of string data type, uh, integer types, decimal types, um, your data structures, um, you know, they're very similar. Then you've got your, um, uh, um, like constructs, like loops, um, you know, switches or cases, whatever. Um, so the different languages have all like very similar constructs and very similar features. You know, once you learn one, it's very easy to pick up another one. And once you know how to look at a programming manual, it's very easy to go to a new language, look at the manual and you'll be able to find what you want. You know, if you want to look how loops work, you can search for loops. Um, if you want to look at functions, you would search for functions. Um, you know, it, once, once you have that general understanding, you'll find that you'll start to pick things up faster and faster and faster. And just, you know, there's so much good resources these days. Like you used to have to, I remember when I was younger, like there was just programming books, you know, and now there's things on that you can watch people program on the internet. Um, and I'm always been the type of learner that if sometimes I might find something hard to grasp, but if I look over someone's shoulder and I watch them do something, I can do it like that, you know, like if I see someone do something, I find it much easier myself to do it or to understand it. That was for you, silly Alpa. I mean, I think VLang is very easy to learn for a beginner. Personally, I think it's one of the easier languages to learn. This is in my opinion. I think that it's a, it's a very easy language to learn. Like it does have some features, um, for example, like shared items, which even they're not that complicated, but it, there, there are a couple of little features which are a bit more complicated to wrap your head around. But let's see, they're not even things that I even use very often. Like the basic language is very, very simple. You don't have that many features. Um, you just have your basic constructs. Um, then you once you learn about optionals, and result types. Um, what else is there? You got variadics, multiple returns. They're very basic uh, things to learn. Uh, mutable variables and um, passing mutable variables. I mean, it's it's very easy to learn. I think um, I think it wouldn't take even someone. I mean, a full beginner like it might help to just to learn the basics of, of programming and computers how, how um, computers store things in memory and things like that. You don't need to know that stuff, but it gives you a better understanding of, um, of what's happening underneath in your program and how pointers work and stuff like that. I think that's why I love C because C is such a simple language, but you can do very powerful things with it. I mean, simple in terms of the syntax and things like that. It does have some quirky things that are a bit more complicated, but it's simple and syntactically and it's very powerful and it gives you a 
good understanding of how things work under the hood. So C is like a language I'd recommend for everyone to learn. Um, it's, and so much stuff is written in C and you can basically do anything in C. Like if C was the only language you had to use, you could pre pretty much do everything with it. But um, V, yes, V I think is very easy to learn. Yes, yeah, so I've programmed in C Sharp, Java, I mean, heaps of languages. I mean, I've been programming for 23 years, 24 years or something. I've tried basically so many languages in that time. Like, I used to do, like, back in the day, like, when Flash was a thing on websites, I did, like, um, ActionScript. And then, like, ActionScript, I think, started, I replaced, then ActionScript was done in Swift, I think, after a bit. Um, but yeah, I've done C sharp, ASP.net back in the day. Um, I tried D, I've tried, I've tried so many languages. Um, I've really lost count of all the languages I've tried. But the more, la the, I've used so many languages now that I've basically forgotten like a lot of the languages, like. There's only like five, six main languages that I could really like use proficiently now. Like if I had to. And the, the other ones I could pick up again very quickly if I needed. But, you know, I've just, I've, it's like Homer Simpson says, like every time I learn something new, it pushes the old stuff out of my brain. I feel like that sometimes. <laughs> Hate from Reddit, hate from Reddit towards V, you mean? Um, I just ignore the haters. Look, v, I'm not, V isn't my project. I'm Australian, yeah. From Melbourne, Australia. G'day, mate. Throw a shrimp on the barbie, mate. But, um... Oh, you, what's up? Why is Melbourne gross? Well, anyway, I'm stuck here. It's not the greatest place. Uh, I thought you were American. That's why I said that. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got another Aussie here. Yeah, there's, there's, um, I mean, there is spiders. Yeah, there's like redbacks all under the house and stuff. If you go look, but they don't bother you. Um, well, it's good we've got another Aussie here but yeah I was just going to say V isn't my project I'm just a contributor to V um, I'd like to say I've been with the V team for a long time and contributing in my own way big or small for a long time I'd like to say that uh, I've been following V since the very early days, since it was first released as a beta. I remember I probably was the first person to compile it on Windows or to, not to compile it on Windows, but to, I don't know, to get it running on Windows and do something. I can't remember, but I do remember writing a guide or something on Windows. I, I've been, I've been floating around the V space for a long time. I'll put it that way. I will be right back.
Alright. So, back to making the checker parallel. Let me see. We've got a few different stages going on. We've got We've got these type check files here. We pass in each file. Now, what I would like to do is, let's open the checker here. Now I'll say parser is basically done and it's very clean. There's a few things that need to be cleaned up, but it's very clean and tidy and nice. The checker is what I've just been working on now and it's quite, messy um, but that's not a problem we will get cleaned up so but the parser is 99 percent done so there's a couple little things missing but it's it's really good and the parser can handle so many more cases than the current parser well the current parser might do things that this parser doesn't but this parser does things in a way that are very um, solid and it can handle sort of unlimited amounts of nested expressions. You could do some really cool things with the syntax that aren't really possible at the moment. Um, so, firstly, I do these pre-register types. Now this loops through all the files, but this can be done in parallel, like I can do that in parallel and then the next step in parallel as well. But first I'll start off doing that step by itself and then the rest in parallel and then I'll just do it all parallel. So let's have a look here. If I do I mean, do you mean does it have bindings for the Win32 API? If so, it doesn't currently. Like you mean to do, for example, to use like the Win32, for example, to draw windows and stuff like that, do you mean? If that's what you mean, it doesn't currently. It has its own uh, user interface library, but you could easily, um, because it interrupts with C so well, you could um, easily, um, you could easily make your own, you can easily do Win32 API calls and things like that uh, very easily. We don't have standard library like that at the moment. It's always something you could add if you wanted it. The stream keeps crashing, does it? Sorry about that. I don't know if it's my problem or if it's something on your, oh, okay. Okay. Um, so we've got this checker here. Now I want, I want to, let's have a look at, um, So, I can call this some um, workers. Okay, <clears throat> and we can this this we could pass in the channels that we want. So, oh, hang on, how are we going to do that? Can we do that? Um, hmm.
let's do a little let's open um oh this is the wrong thing so let's do What do we got here? We got ah. say so we do like that. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm just trying something if I could do this. Can I pass any channel as, or can I pass any function signature here? Um, it's not gonna work if I do that. What if I do, I don't think it's gonna work either way I do this. If I wanted to make it generic, I'd probably have to make it generic. have to make it generic. Make two arguments, we got zero. Ah, wait a minute. to pass the Redefinition of parameter. <clears throat> I 
Oh yeah, what am I doing? It's not gonna work. Uh, what if I just pass some? Um... Um... Yeah, that's not gonna work. Best way to do this is um, I don't know what the best way to do this. I don't think I can do what I want to do exactly. Uh, I don't know what the best way to do this is. If I have, um, Well, wow. uh, um, how am I going to even pass those there without calling it? Can't, uh, This isn't gonna work, and I have to make this generic. I'm just me fucking around, to be honest. <laughs> I know this isn't gonna work. Uh... <clears throat> See, can't use. Um... I don't know what the best way to do this is. Uh, so if we have a work, uh, uh, I need the channel somewhere. Uh, maybe I could have, um, I do Chan T. Maybe I can do that. Something similar. <laughs> I 
And why just do it manually and then I'll abstract it into a function, into a function that both can use, into, sorry, a, not a function, into a, some type of library that they both could use. <clears throat> Yeah, I could do that actually, I guess. And I could do, um, Let's um I don't need that. That's a bug, I think. Oh hang on. No. That's that should be uh that's right. Hang on. No. Work. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh. Hang on. Yeah, that's not going to work. I don't know if the generics has messed it up or something else. Looks like that. We get all kinds of errors. Hmm. Well, let's not worry about that for now.
I don't know the limitations of generics and things like that currently, so I don't know what exactly is and what's not possible. Um, so I might have to come back to that. Well, let's have a look at check and see how we'll go about this. So if I do, um, check this in parallel. Um, okay, so we'll pass in the environment to check on. Okay. So this should be is that going to break anything? Uh, what did I do? Okay. Runtime with the pool. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Just comment all that. Um, <clears throat> so. This is interesting, actually. Let's just have a look at this. It thinks it was used as a different, this is a thing in VLib. LCV, VLib, time. Hang on. It's probably time, I think. Why? <laughs> Oh no, that's nothing to do with that. Never mind. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's just say, let's call this, uh, okay. Now, what we can do is check, uh, let's have, um, N will be environment. Let's just make a method for that. Let's do pub function new without setting anything special.
So this environment is what will be shared between um, multiple checker uh, instances that are running, things like that, or what the the same thing that you use for when you run the type checker, you'll get this environment which will be set to all the type checked. It's basically the results of the type checker. This environment will be so that can be used for the next stages. Um, so you can run, um, you have multiple environments, things like that. It's the same thing that will allow us to do. Well, this is where the information will be stored too for for parallel checks as well. Um, uh, so we'll change that to check the new. So we'll just use that. What have I done? <clears throat> Do I save this? Why doesn't that work? What's going on here? I'm using function checker that new. What? That's how it's done. Isn't it? I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, should could be something to do with. Oh, I thought I was in the types module. My bad. I thought I was in the types module. That explains it. Okay, all good. Actually, while we're at it, let's do, do, do the parser. Let's do 
same thing here. Okay, <clears throat> so the environment pass the checker. Now we could do something like um, checker dot. Actually, we can do. Let's just do the check files as the parallel because I might be able to do it in a way where this stuff gets lazily added onto a queue. Um, You know what? I think I'm going to um. I think I'm going to jump off stream for a bit. So a bit of a headache. Might go um. I don't know. Might just go relax for a bit and then. Maybe stream again later or. Stream again tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not thinking that. I'm not really feeling it at the moment. But, um, yeah. And then when I come back, or I'll probably work on this um, off stream as well a little bit later. But when we come, when I come back, I'll we'll, we'll continue on with this. Um. So yeah, making type checker parallel. Okay, uh, we've done today. We got generics. We got the generic types from inside of the generic arguments, like array types, map types, and function arguments, function return type, uh, multiple levels of nesting. In that sense, um, that still needs some more work on. Um, when you have, there's a couple of things we need to do with generics, but we'll get back to that as well. So I'm going to jump off for now. Thanks for everyone that tuned in and um, I'll be back again soon anyway. I hope everyone has a good day, a good night, whatever time it is um, where you guys are. And I uh, hope to, uh, hope you all stop by next time. Thanks guys.